Here's the challenge. I've been building this massive cat condo for our Maine Coon kittens, and I need to find a way for them to get from here to up here. And honestly, they could probably just jump up, but I'm gonna make this way more complicated than it needs to be. Spend too much time building it and making it out of wood that is too expensive. And did I mention that this project is probably beyond my woodworking capabilities? I'm gonna build a staircase, a staircase to nowhere. Why is it called a staircase to nowhere? Well, I'm gonna get into that and answer all those questions and more. Side note, something is new and unique in this clip, but more on that later. Also, I have a new addition to the shop that I obtained by cunning manipulation, so stay tuned for that. I'm attempting to build a staircase to nowhere. I know you have questions why and what that means, and I'll answer both of those questions in this video. You may have heard in the news some years ago about the bridge to nowhere, but there isn't just one. These types of projects are more common than you think, but they have a purpose. And do they really go to nowhere? I mean, why would I build a staircase that goes to nowhere? Am I some insane person? Would I just waste time and money for nothing? I mean, maybe, maybe I would. I mean, if it means clicks and views, right? Well, not so much. This staircase obviously goes somewhere, but the question is, why? Every day I go to work, I get the pleasure of driving over the top of one of these so-called bridges to nowhere. It's an eyesore that drums up a lot of emotions from everyone, especially in California, where I live. I want to tell you all about that and more, but first, let me briefly explain the infamous bridge to nowhere. Oh, there it is right there. Did you see it? No? You should probably look a little closer. Let me explain. But before I go any further, pay attention to what I say here. More importantly, what you see. I need to cut these steps into 10 inch pieces and this is the part that I'm a little nervous about because if I mess this up, I didn't make extra. Did you notice that this is not the same miter saw as from a few minutes ago? Well, let me explain. In my previous video, I introduced a new addition to our family, Millie Molly Maine Coon, who is a very large house cat from the Maine Coon breed. In that video, I built a hexagon bed that will be a feature within the entire cat condo that I am building this staircase for. My next video will showcase the completed condo, so come back for that one. But since releasing that video, Mrs. Sawdust came up with the idea that Millie Molly needed a friend. Apparently, it had to be another Maine Coon, and our other three cats and two dogs were not good enough? I was not keen on the idea of getting another cat, but why let a great opportunity pass me by? Come on, high fives! Yeah! Oh, this is good! So, I made a deal with her. I offered that she could get another Maine Coon, so as long as she bought me a new Makita miter saw and Bosch router. The DeWalt miter saw won't work for my upcoming miter saw station build because the sliding rails prevent it from being stored against the wall and I want another router because I'm tired of constantly removing it from the router table for handheld and plunge cuts. Was this cunning manipulation, shrewd wheeling and dealing, or just marriage? You be the judge. I have to admit, my brain really hurts thinking about all the angles that I gotta cut, but after cutting this piece right here, I think I dialed it in just right. I just have to take off the edge of all of these before I move on to the side pieces. That way I get a good look at how they're matching up. Now I just need to take each of these pieces, flip them this way, and cut that angle off. Everything is at a 125 degree angle or whatever off 90, right? 35 degrees. All the pieces, if my mouth is right. I'm pretty depressed or bummed out about how things are going. These miters just aren't coming together. They need to come together like this 
And there's a big old gap here. My only thought is to trim down the width of this and then redo this angle. If I can get this piece right, then I might be able to get the whole thing right. I've been staring at this for not quite an hour, but it sure feels like it. So I need to just take a little bit off this and then figure this out. Maybe you can see this gap that I'm talking about here. I have this flush now, so the width is just perfect, but there is this gap. So if I make this a sharper angle, then I can make these meet up. And maybe, just maybe, I might not screw up this entire project. Getting closer, getting a lot closer. My miter gauge is set to 55 degrees. That must be the magic number. I don't know how I screwed that up. I'm not very good at math, clearly. It's 55 degrees on the miter gauge. Now, if I can match this to all the actual pieces, I could be in business. I know the viewers enjoy seeing the struggle, so I didn't want you to miss out on that. But earlier, I was talking about the bridge to nowhere. So let me catch you up on the story. There is this airstrip called the Ketchikan International Airport that sits on Gravina Island with a population of 50 inhabitants. Now, I'm assuming all 50 inhabitants are human, not including dogs and cats, but I'm just telling you what the information superhighway is telling me. 50 inhabitants. There is a river-like body of water called the Tungus Narrows that has a ferry that transports people from Gravina Island to the town of Ketchikan, Alaska. The total trip takes about 7 minutes over 1.7 miles. Now back in 2005, a couple of brilliant congressmen had this neat idea that building a bridge connecting Gravina Island to the town of Ketchikan would be awesome. At a whopping price tag of $398 million, some taxpayers and lawmakers took issue with this idea especially since these congressmen were seeking U.S. federal dollars to fund it. So to break it down simply, you have a bunch of money being spent on a project that benefits a small amount of people. These congressmen tried a classic pork belly spending move by slipping it into an ominous federal spending bill. This bold move led to a lot of political back and forth that literally took 10 years. And the Gravina Island Bridge Project or Bridge to Nowhere, was ultimately canceled. Instead, they settled on upgrading the ferry service, so maybe a new motor for the boat? I'm not sure. Remember in the beginning of this video, I told you to pay attention to something new and unique, and I would tell you about it more later? Well, check this out. For a moment, let's all go back a few years ago. You might remember having to wear a mask at work, school, and many public places. Personally, I had a hard time wearing a mask because they were so uncomfortable and I felt like my breathing was restricted. This was the same time that I became passionate about woodworking, so when it came to wearing a mask in my shop, well, it was hard making it a priority, and you may have noticed from a lot of my videos. So when I was approached by Basecamp, they offered to send me some of their masks, and I was curious if their masks would address my comfort concerns. They are not sponsoring this video, but after giving their mask a thorough wearing around the shop, I was excited to join Basecamp as an affiliate. I wear these because they provide great protection from all the dust, especially when sanding, and they are super comfortable due to the enlarged one-way valves and adjustable nose clip that prevents your glasses from fogging. Included are multiple replaceable filters, and if you want to support this channel and your respiratory system, then click on the affiliate link in the description and use the code DUDESAWDUST10 to save 10% on your purchase. I stand by this mask, so get one. I finally just glued up the very last piece and I gotta say it took a really long time because I had to do one, two, three, four, a bunch of pressure fits, hand clamps. I didn't have all uh, the small clamps to get the right angles and I wasn't gonna go spend the time and money and effort to do that. But 
the temperature every day has been over 110 degrees and this glue dries really fast. So I've been applying manual pressure for about eight to 10 minutes. I can, after that, I can actually walk away from it and it just stays where it is. So I think that this joint is gonna stay really strong. The Gravina Island Bridge to Nowhere is not the only project of its kind. It gets worse, trust me, much worse. Have you ever heard of a little no-name state called California? Okay, okay, I know. The whole world knows about California. They say it's the fifth largest economy in the world. So a measly $398 million seems like chump change to us Californians. Which brings me back to the California bullet train to where? nowhere. Every day on my commute to work, I drive on an overpass that has a view of a cement wall that is the high-speed rail. There is no construction in sight, and some parts of the over $100 billion construction venture are already covered in graffiti. There is even talk that the project has been reduced to only going from Bakersfield to Merced rather than Los Angeles to San Francisco. Bakersfield to Merced? No one makes that commute. Okay, so enough of my complaining. My point is this. I'm building a staircase for a couple of oversized cats who couldn't care less about it. I'm not even sure they will ever even use it. They may just bypass it altogether and simply jump onto the cat condo platforms, completely underappreciating my craftsmanship. This small, tiny build took way too much of my time and burned a ton of mental calories figuring out how to build it. I was inspired by this staircase right here. I don't even know if this is a real staircase or some AI image, and I can't figure out where it is from, but I found it by Googling unique staircase designs. As soon as I saw it, I thought I could totally build that. Maybe, possibly, perhaps, probably not. I should definitely not do this. Let's get started. So I reverse engineered it to fit in this cat condo, and here we are my own little construction project to nowhere. Fortunately, it didn't cost me over $100 billion, but the day is young, as they say. I'm gonna pull an audible. I put this middle brace for extra support and I chose maple because frankly, I was conserving my walnut, but I don't think I need it. I think it looks a lot better with just the two braces and it's plenty structurally sound. I'm gonna go with this look instead. I like it better and I think it's plenty strong. So let's move forward. For the meantime, I think these L brackets are gonna be the best possible option for securing this staircase to the base. I was thinking about putting just threaded inserts right here and securing it, but I don't know if that's gonna be stable enough, and I don't know if I wanna see those inserts at this angle. These are a little more inconspicuous and hidden, which I kinda like. If there's a better way, I don't know what it is. But I don't like showing hardware, but it's okay. I'm gonna go with these with threaded inserts so that I can easily disassemble this like the entire project is meant to be. A couple of months have passed since my last video was posted and I have been working on this project pretty much all throughout the summer afternoons in my garage wood shop with no air conditioning while many of the days have been over 110 degrees. Mr. Cool, if you're watching and wondering, the answer is yes. When I first conceptualized this project, I really didn't think it would take this long, but that is pretty much how all of my projects start out in my head. You would think that after all these years, I would start to have a grasp on how long these things take. On the other hand, I can only romanticize the freedom of being able to do this full time. Some days, I only have an hour to get in the shop and get stuff done. Since I have to film, I have to change my clothes into the same outfit I've been wearing while filming and building. If I didn't, then you would see like 40 wardrobe changes and I've always felt it would bump the viewer. 
What a person could accomplish in one full day often takes me five days in small increments. If I'm lucky, I may only get one to two days a month where I get to be in the shop for an entire day. I have it completely fastened in and it appears to be very stable, so I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Now, all I have to do is the very tedious glue up process and then add the finishing coat. When I watch other makers on YouTube, I'm always impressed when they say, okay, well, that's it for today. I'll come back tomorrow and finish up this project. Then smash cut to them with their coffee in hand like they just rolled out of bed and stumbled into the shop to spend day two of building something really cool. If I did that, half the video would be 40 clips of me over and over again saying, it's a bright and early day and I'm pumped to be back in the shop, carpe diem, while I sip my morning beverage with both hands. But for now, these videos I make will have to showcase some timeless timeline of me building my projects and wearing the same shirt. Sometimes these projects feel like they're going nowhere because I can spend hours sanding, designing, taping, or even 3D modeling. But eventually, eventually, I get to take a step back and see, in fact, that I haven't gone nowhere, but actually gotten somewhere. And while this little big project is my staircase to nowhere, when I take a step back, I realize I've come pretty far because this staircase to nowhere can't help but go somewhere. This staircase is one of three videos I'm creating on the cat condo. My next video will be the complete condo build, but before you watch that, click on this video right here where I build a one of a kind Maine Coon cat sized hexagon tunnel bed that will be integrated into the complete condo. I even do some innovative newbie upholstery, so check it out. See ya.